Trev's Hockey Show. I'm the Trev. It's too sweet. Anyway, back to retired numbers. And I do have to say, right off the hop, I've been meaning to do this one for some time. I've had different versions of this script written. And for one reason or other, I just wasn't happy with them. But I'm content with what I've got written now. And hopefully, I do some justice to this. But today, we're talking about the curious case of the number that's retired, but not retired. I'll explain this as we get into it. We're talking about the number six, hang, not hanging up in Detroit. Larry Ari. Let's check it out. Before we get into this, I'm first going to say he played his entire 11 year career in Detroit, playing for every version of the team. So, today's episode is going to be broken down a lot like that. Today, well, this part, we're starting off with the Cougars. His rookie campaign would have been would have been good, a good season by the day standards, not two day standards, by that day standards. Finishing fourth in team scoring with 16 points in a four, full 44 game schedule for a Cougars team that missed the playoff by three points. This is the Cougars' second season in the league and Ari's first, and they missed the playoffs by three points, three more points, and the Cougars would have been playing the Rangers instead of the Pirates playing the Rangers. But, is what it is, right? Sophomore season, saw better production for the Cougars, meaning they did all right, they made the playoffs, but our only managed two points in 35 games, but did tie for the team lead in playoff scoring with one point in two games. So, Ari's second year, definitely not as good as his first, but reasons, right? It happens to a lot of players in, in their sophomore season, that's why it's called the sophomore jinx. Obviously, Larry Ari was bit by it. For the 29-30 season, the last for the Cougars, Ari did find a scoring touchback again, managing 19 points in 43 games. But the team again missed the playoffs. So close. Not quite close enough. But hey, an 18-point improvement is much better than a one-point decrease. It will get better. It really will. So for the next two seasons, we're known as the Detroit Falcons, which is what is based on this. This is inspired by the Falcons. And the team, well, changed the name, but the results stayed the same. Missed the playoffs by eight points. But Ari is now starting to find a scoring touch again, as far as goals is concerned. Granted, for the 30-31 season, he only had 18 points in 41 games. 12 of those points were goals. So, not a bad thing to come into your own as a goal scorer at all for the next season 31 32 some a little more productive scoring 12 points and or 12 goals and 20 points it's nice finding his assist game too and just in time now we're going through another game change now we're in familiar territory now for the 32 33 season they're the detroit red wings and this will be the last name change they ever go through but along with the name change came a chap change in captaincy. Your boy Larry Ari was named captain for the 32-33 season. Just the one season. No, no further than that. And with change comes results. The Red Wings managed to finish second in the American Division. But only a matter of 13 goals. The Wings and the Bruins. They finished with identical records, so tiebreaker was necessary. And Boston had them beat in goals. But meh. Details, right? <laughs> Ari managed to keep the, up his productivity. 12 goals, 11 assists for 
23 points. So he's getting better as the seasons go on. Good for fourth on the team. But only managed one goal in four playoff games. So regular season, he's doing really good. Playoffs. Maybe it's because he's not playing as much so far. 33-34, however, was a good year for all involved. Red Wings are first in the American Division. 24 wins, 14 losses, 10 ties. Because ties were a thing. And Ari is tied for the team lead in assists with Cooney Weiland at 19. But he does lead the team in points with 35. So that's not a bad deal at all. Tied for assists, sure. But she leads the team in points. Top of that, he also led the team in playoff points with 10 points in 9 games in a strong effort against the eventual cup champs, Chicago Blackhawks. So they're getting there. First time reaching the cup and they lost. But best way to win is to learn by losing, right? But it wasn't all a bad season, as he was one of the two representatives for the Red Wings to play in the Ace Bailey benefit game which was the forerunner to what we know as the All-Star Game. 34-35 was definitely a better season for Ari, despite the Red Wings missing the playoffs by five points. Ari managed to play second on the team in goals with 17, but led the team in what turned out to be a career high in assists with 29 and points with 46. So two career highs in one season. Those 46 points... We're good for third in the league. Only nine points behind the league leader, Charlie Conacher. So, he got really good. Really good. 35-36 was another solid year in Detroit. Seeing the Wings finish first in the American Division again. With 24 wins, 16 losses, 8 ties. And they finally won the first cup in team history. Being thrown on Maple Leafs in four games. So it's about time they got there, right? <laughs> the playoffs are notable for two things. One, the Montreal Maroons and the Detroit Red Wings on March 24th, 1936 saw game one go to six overtimes. And also be the last time we see Larry Ari in the playoffs. Ari did finish third in team scoring with 34 points. But he managed three points in seven playoff games. But he's got a cup. That's the important thing. At 36-37, saw Ari lead the league in goals with 23, which also turned out to be a career high, and finished second in team scoring with 43 points. So one point behind team Marty Berry. But his 43 points were still good for fourth overall in the league. So he's flirting with number one, but just not making it to number one. But hey, even to be in the top five, that's still impressive enough. I'm sure it would have been more if it weren't for a collision on March 11th, 1937 with Ranger defenseman Art Coulter, which ended his season in what turned out to be a leg fracture. Very ouch. So he missed the playoffs entirely. And that's why I said for the 35-36 season, it was his last playoff season because he didn't play in the playoffs after that point. Even, even still, though, the Wings did manage to win their second straight cup. Thanks to the solid point totals, he was named on the first NHL All-Star team for that season. So even though he had to go out with a bum leg, still managed first team All-Star. But 37-38, which would be his last full season, has lingering effects from that leg injury. I only limited him to 19 points, which is definitely not the productivity he expected or much less could say, hey, that's what I'm good for. At the end of the season, at only 33 years old, he hung him up. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? I mean, you only have one life, you only have two legs, and if one's gone, that's it. But on June 1st, 1938, team owner James Norris, you'll learn that name. We'll do a video on James Norris at some point and the trophy that bears his name. But on June 1st, 1938, James Norris officially retired number six. Now, Ari, considered by Norris to be the heart and soul of the franchise, 
His all-around play, his goal-scoring ability, helped lead the Wings to two Stanley Cups, three final appearances. But on top of that, his short stature, he was only five foot six, so he was really about as tall as Theron Fleury or Martin St. Louis. Earned him nicknames like Little Dempsey and the Little Ragman, because he was good at ragging the puck with his short size. So in his 11-year career with Detroit, Ari managed to score 147 goals, 129 assists for 276 points in 489 games. He also had six goals and nine assists for 15 points in 24 playoff games. So while the number was retired officially, it was never ever displayed beyond the lobby in Olympia Stadium, which was the home before Joe Louis Arena. It was briefly reissued for Cummy Burton in the late 1950s with the blessing of the Ari family because Larry Arley was Burton's cousin. But it was never raised to the rafters with the other Red Wings retired numbers in, in the system, despite several published accounts to do so. Now, it was explained by owner at the time, Mike Illich, that it's because Ari isn't a Hall of Famer. So they're not going to put his number up, which I guess is their thing. I mean, you can't tell a team how to ret how to retire their numbers, but if that was their logic, then it makes sense to them. But the number is out of circulation nonetheless. So it was retired, but it's not retired, but it's not being used. Make of that what you will. But a quick recap of his NHL accolades while we're here. Two Stanley Cups, one first team All-Star nomination for the 36-37 season. They played in the Ace Bailey benefit game in 1934. So pretty solid career and worth a video all the same. So that's another one chess hockey show. I want to thank you for tuning in. I don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you're right here. We made it. We did it almost 12 and a half minutes, but we made it. So while you're here, hit that like button. And while you're here, hit that red button. Because subscribe makes you feel good. And we're going for 100. So let's do it. All my socials in the description down below. Moving forward, I got a book still that is not going to keep me anywhere close to not busy. <laughs> but... Uh, We've got more award winners coming up tomorrow, and that's probably where I'm going to pick right back up is tomorrow. So either way, in the meantime, in the meantime, be looking forward to some Trev. Later.